I am no longer an athlete. I'm just a recreational weightlifter, sprinter, yoga practitioner, and occasional softball player. I do it for my health. However, I much appreciate the theories and techniques of sports psychology, the benefits of effective leadership, group dynamics, concentration, self-talk, and event preparation extend far beyond athletes. For example, I am now giving a presentation. This presentation requires me to manage my level of anxiety, concentrate on research and writing, control my intonation and speech rate, and prepare with deliberate practice and imagery. These concepts extend to workplaces, classrooms, families, and social engagements. Anything that involves task completion or group collaboration can benefit from sports psychology research. Today I will focus on self-talk. This is a topic close to my heart as it played an important role in my life. My self-talk fostered a dangerously inflated ego in my teen years, bottoming out in my early 20s, and a recent renaissance-like upward spiral. So, what is self-talk? Self-talk is an internal monologue of self-given instructions and interpretations of events. In other words, it's how we narrate our lives. Self-talk is crucial because it represents our thought patterns. The content of our thoughts can influence our future actions. We have some control over our thoughts. Therefore, if we can improve the quality of our inner speech, we can influence more positive life outcomes. While my self-talk has much improved, it did not start out that way. I was 6'4 and 215 pounds as a high school junior. I ran 40 yards in less than 4.8 seconds. I was no elite athlete, but coaches provided ample praise. You're gonna be great. Someone will pay for your college. In my teen years, my ego goal orientation was toxically high. My goal at practice was to appear competent by outshining my peers. On the other hand, my task goal orientation remained low. I was disinterested in learning new skills or growing my abilities. As a result, my self-talk vacillated in bipolar fashion. Yes! Great play! You're the best! What are you doing? You suck! How could you miss that read, stupid? The praise went to my head and became my primary goal in sports. I often felt unmotivated to lift weights, study film, or train my on-field quickness beyond a level of my teammates. Hard work is for the untalented. I'm already talented. This self-talk embodied a fixed mindset, a belief in unchangeable abilities. So in my mind, there was no point in exerting too much effort to improve. I simply needed to maintain my greatness. I told myself I would be great without truly understanding the work required to be great. This self-talk bred feelings of entitlement and inferiority. I focused on competing with others rather than competing with myself. Since I often outperformed my teammates, I never challenged myself to improve. This ill-advised self-talk produced an underwhelming football career. Athletes with very high ego goal orientation tend to engage in less self-talk than their lower ego-oriented counterparts. However, this study did not examine the content of that self-talk. High ego goal orientation also correlates with increased anxiety and boredom. Those emotions do not suggest beneficial self-talk. Despite the potential pitfalls of ego orientation, many psychologists do not see it as an absolute negative. In fact, many contend that it is required for athletes to succeed at an elite level. Many players can coast on talent in high school. However, when I arrived at Division III Willamette University, I received a rude awakening. I foundered at the bottom of the depth chart, and my self-talk suffered from a poverty of optimism and resilience. I'm at the bottom of the depth chart. I suck. Why bother trying to get better? Is practice over yet? I want to go home. Sadly, I lost interest, burnt out, quit, and dropped out of school. Unfortunately, growing older is no guarantee of growing wiser. But, fortunately, I did change for the better in the past three years. First, I came across Carol Dweck's TED Talk, where she discussed the flip side of her mindset theory, the growth mindset. I came to realize that talents are not entirely innate. We can develop our talents if we choose to cultivate them. This requires us to exert effort, learn from mistakes, and maintain an optimistic frame of mind to reach our full potential. 
Each of these elements represent a thought pattern and therefore can reflect themselves in one's self-talk. Wow, that offensive lineman really locked up my pads. I should practice staying low out of my stance. Then maybe I can get past him. I never played football again, but as I adopted kinder and more flexible self-talk, I pushed my intellectual boundaries. The University of Kentucky later accepted me into their linguistics program. I knew next to nothing about linguistics, but I did know that I wanted to live abroad. I sought an enlightening expatriate experience. Initially, I found linguistic theories difficult and grammar study overwhelming. However, armed with a developing growth mindset, I slowly found my way. Man, I cannot figure out how to draw this sentence tree. Maybe my professor can offer some advice in her office hours. I persisted, I learned, and I graduated in 2016. And now I teach English at a South Korean high school. My more positive self-talk helps me to navigate many cultural minefields of uncertainty and misunderstanding. What are they talking about? It doesn't matter. Just smile and play along. Look, I know you went to the wrong classroom, but this was an honest mistake. Just smile and say you're sorry. Look, I know you had a tough day, but just think, three months ago, you didn't even know where to buy food. You've come so far in the last three months. Keep up the good work. How have I been able to improve my self-talk? How can others adjust their inner speech to reflect more optimism and positivity? In addition to reminding myself that competencies are malleable, I have found two potent evidence-based practices to improve self-talk. First is the research by Dr. Kristen Neff at the University of Texas. Her research on self-compassion shows incredible potential. Self-compassionate self-talk emphasizes self-kindness, a shared human experience, and mindfulness. Oh my god! I just logged into the Smartbook website and noticed that Professor Tuttle's assignment is due in three days. I should have been more diligent, but sometimes people just drop the ball. Everyone makes mistakes at some point. I know, I know this is a stressful situation to think about, but let's take a deep breath and we'll attack this project one step at a time. Second, one can use countering when encountering negative thoughts. This involves slowing down and challenging toxic or irrational thoughts with contrary evidence. Some believe this technique to be effective against catastrophizing. Catastrophizing is a maladaptive cognitive pattern which emphasizes negative self-evaluations and outcomes. It is basically runaway negative self-talk, doom and gloom, and prophesizing the by far worst case scenario. <sighs> oh my goodness. Professor Tuttle's video assignment is due in three days. I'm doomed. I didn't interview anybody. He's going to fail me for the project. I'm going to fail the class. If I fail the class, there's no way I'll be able to give Vince graduate programs. I'm a serious student. I won't get accepted anywhere. What will I do then? Wait. I currently have an A in the class. Even if I got a zero on this project, I could still earn a passing grade. While I may lose points for not interviewing an expert, I did relate self-talk to my life narrative. That counts for something. Worst case scenario, I finish the project, I earn a B or a C, I earn an A minus, maybe a B minus in the class. It's going to be okay. This seems to be the theme of effective self-talk. It's going to be okay. You can learn from this. Your mistake was not fatal. You can be better tomorrow than you were today. Focus on improving this one thing right now. When I was young, I did not internalize these messages. I thought I had to succeed relative to my peers at all times or I was a failure and would be miserable forever. Today I laugh at such faulty thinking. Today I talk to myself as a friend rather than as a harsh critic. Today I use self-talk to interrupt unhelpful thought patterns. Sports may be a physical exhibition, but many of the athlete's obstacles 
are mental in nature. Sometimes success depends on us telling ourselves the right advice at the right time. Thank you.